Good day to you all. Justin Ian is here with World Heroes 2, a fighting game that you guys probably haven't even heard of because you were too busy playing Street Fighter at the time this came out. Now, I really love, uh, well, I, I like this game. This is a very, very solid fighting game, and I'd say the main reason why I like it is that it's so obscure and nobody else knows about it. So I feel like I'm part of this special club of people who know about this game and nobody else knows what I'm talking about when I mention the characters or anything. It's so exciting. But yeah, this game has its own little cast of characters that you haven't seen anywhere else and it has its own little world it takes place in. As far as the gameplay for this game goes, though, I would say that it's Street fighter like you know. It plays kind of like Street Fighter, but it it only has two buttons that you attack with, and those are punch and kick. Now, you can change the uh, strength of your punch and kick dependent on whether you tap or hold each attacking button. So, there is some depth there. There's also those uh, little secret command moves that I, I really like, like, you know, the charge back forward and the quarter circles. All that good stuff is here. Um, but yeah, I, I shouldn't just ramble on about this game at the, at the uh, title screen. I should just dive right in and show you just how awesome, or, well, just how all-around fun this game can be. So, let's, uh, let's just get started here before the demo spoils too much. And the title screen makes you wait a while before you can get into the game properly, and there we go. Now, I always go to the options menu whenever I play a video game. Always the first thing I do. Don't know about you guys, but... Ah, yes, the game difficulty. Now, this game... Perhaps my favorite thing about this game is the difficulty of your AI opponents. It's, you know, actually... It's actually good. It's actually accurate. You set it to 1, it's easy. Set it to 4, it's normal. Set it to 8, it's hard. Um... Now, I might just be saying this because I've played a lot of really hard fighting games such as Guilty Gear and Mortal Kombat, but I would actually say this game may be uh, a bit on the easy side when it comes to fighting games. Actually, it's very easy. Now, you know how back when you played Street Fighter for the first time, and, you know, since you're new to the game, you set the difficulty to one star so you can get some practice, and you can't even beat the first guy? Anybody know what I'm talking about? No? Just me? Well, anyway, for this game, you know, the AI is much easier, so you're not going to have that problem. Like, say say in Street Fighter, you set it to 1, and the difficulty is hard. Set it to 4, it's impossible. And set it to 8, and, well, you're going to need medical attention after that, you know. Say that that's the case. Well, with this game, if you set it to 1, the difficulty is pathetic. Your opponent doesn't even fight back. If you set it to four, you know, they, they put up a fight. And if you set it if you set it to eight, that's if uh, that's if you want to challenge, you, you want to test your skills at this game. But I'm just going to leave it to four. I, I think I might have beaten the game once. I might have beaten this game once on difficulty eight. Not sure, though. Um, I'm pretty sure I beat it on six, but I'm going to leave it on four for now, just so I can show off how this game is. Um, how this game is usually. I'm not trying to show off any skills or anything, just how the game plays, because I like this game. Next we go to speed. Eh, I'll just leave it on two. I'm used to that. Time limit. I always turn the time limit off on these uh on these fighting games. I hate it. I hate it when a fighting game insists that you have a time limit. Like there's no option to turn it off. Um, I mean, can't can I just do a disco dance while fighting my opponent? Can I just monkey around with them for a while before actually getting into the fight? I mean, some fighting games, they just say, No, you have to have a time limit. Can't be sitting around all day. Life gauge, uh, we'll, we'll leave it at the, at the default. I usually don't mess with that. What's mask? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not wearing a mask right now, so I guess I'll just, uh, guess I'll just leave the mask off. <laughs> Yeah, I think this option is if you're having a, a Halloween party, a, a World Heroes 2 themed Halloween party, you're going to have a World Heroes 2 tournament. So you invite everyone over and they're all in their costumes. So they got masks on and you don't want the people with the masks to be at a disadvantage. So I guess you turn the mask on um, if you got an, an event like that going on. So the people with masks on can uh, 
you know, actually not be disadvantaged because I can't see through that thing. But I'm not wearing a mask, so we'll keep that off. And like I said, only two buttons. What's with the throw being L and R? I mean, I've I've played this game, you know, I can just throw my opponent by walking right up to him, doing a hard punch or a hard kick, automatically grab on. So, yeah, I don't know what that's about, but yeah, sound mode, let's see what we got here. Let's go surround, you know, can we do that? No. A uh, you know, 2D fighting game with surround sound, what, what would that be like? Probably wouldn't be much different. But we'll do stereo, because that's what the cool kids were doing back in those days. Alright, everything looks to be in order. So, let's rock. Go to the one player mode. It's just me here. Alright, we're finally at the player select screen. Now, these two guys right here are basically the Ryu and Ken of the game. Don't know which one's Ryu and which one's Ken, but that's who these guys are. And the cool thing is that they're ninjas. Everybody loves ninjas. <laughs> now, I would go through this list of characters and talk about each one of them, but... I'm just gonna, just gonna say that, yeah, I'm gonna save you some time, I'll, I'll talk as we go on what the characters are like, but my two favorite characters are Jan and Rasput. That, these are the ones I play as the most. Uh, sometimes I'll play as Mudman because, you know, he's fun, and he's, it, it's very easy to win as him, that's why I don't play as him that much, I, I want a little bit of a challenge. But, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to show off all my favorite characters. Um, so if I lose, I'm going to switch characters. Who knows, I, I might end up having to lose on purpose, but we'll, we'll see when we get there. So, I'll just pick Jan first off. Um, something about this game, there's you can just do the standard arcade mode, or you can do survival match. In the Japanese version, it's called death match. Now, survival match is basically, I hate calling it that, death match is where you and your opponent are pitted in an arena with traps all around. Laser beams, landmines, electric grids, oil slicks, I think that was one of them. Stuff catching on fire, explosions, Michael Bay. But I'm I'm not going to do the, the death match right now. Maybe I'll do that another time, because it's fun. Uh, it takes a really long time, though. So I, I'll probably only show off a piece of it if I do. Let's get into the arcade mode, then. Travel the world looking for heroes to fight. Oh, gosh. Somebody's just going to come through the computer screen and tackle me to the ground for that one. So our first opponent is Mudman. Alright, you get to see him. You get to see him as an opponent. Wow. It's very interesting. I'd say he's kind of like the, the Faust of this game. And yes, I am using Guilty Gear terminology. He may actually put up a huge fight, because he's a darn good character, let me tell you. Now, I would classify Jan as a charge character. You can hold back and then push forward and you do this move. I'm just doing the same move over and over right now. Okay, there we go. You'll see me do that thing a lot where she jumps across the screen with her sword on fire because that move is quite broken. Jan is quite an unfair character, if I'm honest. But she's still kind of tactical, which is why I like her. Another reason why I like her is I, I don't know what the rules are for this fighting tournament. I mean, is it no holds barred? What's going on here? But Jan seems to be the only person who was smart enough to think, oh, maybe I should bring a weapon to this to this free-for-all. You know, maybe I should bring some sort of a weapon. I mean, a lot of the other characters, they just fight with their hands. Um, I guess I guess the ninjas have shuriken and the and Genghis Khan has claws and Brocken pretty much is a weapon, and he's got a freaking rocket launcher, but you know, Jan was smart enough to bring a sword to this fist fight. Which is why I, I think she's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, and as a as a forewarning, I I may end up accidentally referring to Jan as Helena at some point if I haven't already, because I keep getting her confused with Helena from from Dead or Alive. You know, Helena's kind of a fan crush of mine. <laughs> well, uh, ever, ever since I've uh, found a girlfriend, you know, I've met my beautiful girlfriends. I don't have fan crushes anymore on any video game characters. Aside from Ryudo from Grandia 2. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. But anyway, yeah, Ryudo's cool. One thing I have to mention about this game is a lot of the characters have projectile attacks. But I never use projectile attacks. 
reason why is because the AI in this game is stupid. Oh, I got a perfect. As stupid as the AI is, they will often do this thing. There's a trick in the game where if you block as soon as a projectile is about to hit you, you'll deflect it back at your opponent. And that's something that's very unique to this game, something that makes it special. But for that reason, I never use projectiles, just because there's the risk of, uh, of it getting deflected at you. Another thing about this game is counter throws. I don't know if a lot of fighting games, or if any fighting games, really had counter throws before this one came out. Counter throws are a little too easy to do in this game, though. All you gotta do is be persistent with your button mashing on uh, doing a throw if you want to do one. Now, when you're fighting the AI in this game, or for me at least, I end up doing counter throws all the time. Like, uh, like if my opponent's gonna grab me. I don't even know it. I, I'm just going for a grab, and then mine overrides theirs. But I think if you were to fight an actual human opponent, you'd just be sitting there wrestling all day. Now we're going out to the sea and fighting this guy. He's really... I really like Captain Kidd. He's a cool character. He's really hard to fight, though. I mean, let's, let's see if he pulls some of the crap that he usually does. Well, he's trying. And I'm trying to... I mean, that's the thing with Helena. She, she's the only character in this game who is smart enough to bring a sword with her or something. I mean, this, this guy's a pirate. Shouldn't he have a sword? I mean, what? Did he just take his shirt off and say, No way! The best weapon is your hands! You're not a true pirate unless you can fight hand to hand! Oh, I tried to parry there, like from Street Fighter 3. <laughs> that game's bad for you if you're gonna be playing other fighting games. And I beat him. Now, see that skeleton in the background back there? In the Japanese version, a uh, little backstory here. Um, I tried the Japanese version of this game on a on a ROM before actually buying the game for a Super Nintendo. It, it's only five dollars, so it's no big deal. This game is. But in the Japanese version of this game, that skeleton back there. After each uh, after each round, the skeleton's head falls off and rolls away. And I remember when I was trying out this game for the first time, and I saw that, I said, that does it, I'm buying this game. That's just too hilarious. Then, I get the American version of the game. You know, I buy the American version for $5, and look at the skeleton. He just stops moving, his head doesn't come off. I mean, that was such a disappointment for me. I mean, what? Are, is that too violent for us Americans? Most beautiful sword person in the universe. Uh, sorry, no, I think I think that title should go to Gogan Dantas from Onimusha 2. I keep talking about all these fan crushes on guy characters I have. Uh, guys, I, just so you know, I, I'm not gay. There's nothing wrong with being gay, but I'm, I'm just not gay. I'm very straight. If I say that I have a crush on a guy character in a game, I'm, I'm fooling around. Wow. Here we have Johnny Maximum. He's the Potemkin of this game, or one of the Potemkins. And I think he's really cool, or at least he's a really cool idea. I mean, you'd think we'd be fighting him in a football field, but we're fighting him in, in this back alley somewhere. Is he, is he just some crazy guy who goes around in football attire looking for a fight? And those guys are doing the West Side Story back there. But anyway, yeah, I think this, this is a cool character, Johnny Maximum is. I mean, how many, how many fighting games do you know of that have a football player as a playable character? I'm kind of thinking that there's, uh, there's um, that guy from King of Fighters 98, football player from the American sports team. As far as playing as Johnny Maximum, though, I, I can't. Um, Something about me, uh, you and I have not been properly introduced if you didn't know that I hate playing as the big, slow, grabby characters in fighting games. Now, for other types of games it's different, like in, in Genji Dawn of the Samurai, which is a wonderful game, I guess it counts as a beat-em-up or a, an RPG. It's like a beat-em-up RPG mix. But there's this guy in that game who's really big and kind of slow, but he's got good reach. And he's like, he's completely broken, and I like playing as him. But fighting games, um, 
I don't like playing as the big slow guys who grab a lot. I like the small, fast characters, the ones who can be who can be tactical. Perhaps the ones who uh, who are very hard to learn how to play as. I like playing as those characters, the really tactical ones. I, my friend Eric likes playing as the big slow characters, and I, I just don't know why. Oh, speaking of Eric, here he is. <laughs> No, I have, I have a friend named Eric. Uh, when, when I showed him this game, you know, he made a little comment about him being represented as a Viking. Oh, crud. Now, in this game, this guy can be quite a nuisance. Crud. Got a throw on him. I might not win this. There we go. When in doubt, just grab in this game. Grabs are ridiculously effective against your opponent. Also, Jan's jumping sword slash. Well, I'm thinking about it. Now, I, I didn't want to mention this, but I think I should get it out of the way at some point because I think it's a very clever comment. Um, let's talk about breastplates with big boobs on them. You know, that you see these female anime characters wearing, like Jan here. Now, at first glance, it's really sexy. I mean, you know, heck yeah. Big, big boobs on a breastplate, you know. At first you think it's really sexy, but if you think about it, that's the maximum size that her breasts could be. And those boobs were probably carved into the breastplate out of like two bowling balls or something. If you think about it, Helena, I mean, Jan, Jan is probably flat chested under there. Those boobs are probably carved on there out of nothing. So, that's just a little pet peeve I have about breastplates with big boobs on them. Also, why? Well, I, I know why, you know, it's to give you proper room in there, but that's the thing, you could just, you could just fake it, you could just get a breastplate with big boobs on it, you could be a guy wearing a breastplate with big boobs on it, and people would just look at you funny and say, well, what, what are you doing? <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to Central America, I think. Is this? Yep, it's Shura, the Muay Thai guy. Wow. He can be a pain sometimes. This guy can, you know. He can do, he can do things. This stage is really interesting, if only for that dancing monk in the background. I mean, what's he doing? Is, is there like some little jazzy tune playing that we can't hear? Is he listening? Is he listening to the Stray Cats or something? Oh! Not even really focusing on the game, focusing on that dancing monk back there. Oh, it's not over yet! Oh crud, I, I let go of the controller. And the monk is very happy that we won. Yes, now we will be taking over this fort. And the monk will be forced to... Oh! That was just the first round! Gosh, sure, you sure... You sure last a while. <laughs> That kick that Helena does, I mean, that kick that Jan does. I have to think about what her name is. I'm going to keep referring to her as Helena by accident. But yeah, that kick that, that Jan does, it's like... Is that necessary that we, that we get that shot of whatever's down there? So we won once again. We're getting everyone to kneel before me. So, going all around the world to find, where are we? Italy? Oh, we're fighting, fighting the man, fighting my main man, Rasputin. I really like Rasputin. Um, he's a very interesting character. Uh, similar to how Johnny Maximum is interesting in that he's a football player, you know, how often do you see that in a fighting game? Rasputin is a, a wizard of some sort. He uses magic. And I can't really think of any fighting games that, that have that off the top of my head. Like, characters who are devoted to using magic. And when when Rasputin attacks... <laughs> don't you love the snowman's head coming off? What, what is it with me and heads coming off? That's, that's disturbing. I shouldn't think too far into it. And yeah, the AI isn't too good at using Rasputin. I'm kind of ashamed. I may end up switching characters soon. But yeah, when Rasputin actually attacks, which he's not doing right now, he's got these big cartoony hands and feet that come out. 
Like, he's, he's got these hands and feet generated from magic. Like he was about to do there, but I, I overrode that, overridden that, whatever you want to call it. Also, I really like his idle pose, where he's... Well, I can't get him to do it right now. Oh, I shouldn't let him... Shouldn't let him do stuff like that, but I really like his idle pose. It's like he's charging up for a spell or something. It's like he's... He's chanting his mantra or meditating and getting a little aura around him. I, I just think that's the coolest idle position. But since we're uh, getting close to the end of the game, I may end up switching characters here fairly soon. Um, let's see who I'm fighting next. If you end up fighting Jan, it's it's a nightmare. Oh, but I'm in. I'm fighting uh, fighting the Ryu and Ken characters. I'm fighting Hanzo. This is that beautiful stage. You know what? I'm gonna let him beat me, cause this is a sign that I'm near the end of the game. Come on, I'm just gonna sit still and watch this. Now the thing with Hanzo is that, and and Fuma, they're like they're exactly like Ryu and Ken. It's just they're ninjas. So he's got some sort of a Hadouken type thing. He's got a Shoryuken type of thing, and he's even got that sort of a spin kick. Except he just glides through the air and his whole body spins around. And I actually prefer Hanzo over Puma because Puma. Oh, that's that's cool. Fuma makes really annoying sounds when he bites. Like, he's constantly going, aura, 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 aura. And it's... He keeps doing that, and it's obnoxious. Anyway, I'm gonna purposefully switch characters here. Yeah, Hanzo, enjoy your victory now. You're gonna fall at the hands of Rasputin. The giant, cartoony, magical hands of Rasputin. To reach the top, I seek the strongest in the world. <laughs> Oh, that's a that's a good comment. You don't even rank in the wimpy category. Just realized I didn't have time to read that. Anyway, let's go for Rasputin. So we got Rasputin. We're going back in, back to fight Hanzo. Now Rasputin is a quarter circle character, as I like to call him, but he's really I'd say it's quite tactical, considering wow. he's a quarter circle character. He's hard to get used to, is what I'm saying. Oh, I was pun I was punching the wrong button. Who knows? I might actually win. I might actually lose while, while trying. But okay, the trick with Rasputin is, or at least the trick I use is, do the ex the axle spin a whole bunch. But that doesn't seem to be working on on Puma here. Oh, now it is. Okay, I gotta remember. Oh, another trick I use as Rasputin is I try to grab a lot. Oh, well, I'm gonna end up dead. Okay, almost. There we go, that was close. Rasputin's a great deal harder to use than, uh, than Helena. I mean, than Jan. <laughs> I'm not going to stop calling her that. Her nickname is Helena. Because she looks just like Helena, just wearing a sexy little suit of armor. With, with a breastplate, with a boob plate. So yeah, that's what I do with Rasputin, is I, I just try to run in and grab as much as possible. Do the, ex the axle spin as much as possible. And one thing you can do is pin them into the corner with the, uh, with the axle spin. And then just grab them like that. I mean, I could pretty much do this. Well, there we go. Got him. Yeah, Rasputin probably gets very dizzy when I play as him because I'm doing the axle spin all the time. <laughs> all right, so we beat him. As strong as you are, you are still only human. Is is Rasputin from Mars or something? Is he, he's implying he's not human. Okay, so now we're in... I don't know what this country is. Oh, great, we're fighting Brocken. Now, Brocken's the Axel Lowe of this game. He's the long-reach character, and I don't like playing as... Oh, and he's got a freaking missile launcher. So remember that. Little knee missile launcher, you know. And I I love Brocken's stage. 
I just love the music. I love the tank coming through the wall. I love all the stuff that goes on in the background, which is pretty much just the tank coming through the wall. But I don't like playing as Brocken. I like to make a joke that his name is very accurate, because yes, he is a very broken character. He's too easy to use, and I, I don't like using him. He's like Axel Lowe. You can just sit back and fling your weapon forward or whatever, and your opponent cannot even get up to you and attack properly, if you know what you're doing. Yeah, Brocken's just way too good. I don't I don't like playing as him. He's not very he's not very tactical. No. I just another type of character I generally never like is the uh, stretchy limbs type of character, the the Axel Low type of character who has a reach advantage. The only uh, the only character like that I've kinda come close to liking is Necro from Street Fighter 3, and that's just because there's enough, uh, there's enough there to balance out Necro's, you know, long reach. And plus, Necro himself is a total freak. You know, he's, he's interesting. I like his personality. And I just got a perfect grass mutant. As it should be. Oh, it's the Terminator. I am a crusader. I will fight to the end for love. How do you guys like my Russian accent? Also, what's Rasputin doing? Is he just shrugging in his picture? I mean, what's, what's going on there? <clears throat> so now I guess we're in China? Yep, we're in China. We're fighting Genghis Khan. Gee, I wonder who that could be a reference to. Wow. Yeah, so we're fighting Michael Jackson here and... And, uh, just beating him up with, a, with my skirts. I mean, with my robe. Actually, uh... <laughs> The Rasputin that's presented in World Heroes Perfect is would be very, very much okay with that being called a skirt. But I don't want to talk about World Heroes Perfect because I played that on the uh, World Heroes Anthology, and the one thing that I really love about this game, the difficulty, it's ramped up in that game in a bad way. It's like I'm pretty sure those are straight from arcade ports. And it's like, you can tell they come from a machine that wants to take your coins, because, you know, you can beat the first opponent or two easy enough, but then when it gets to the third one, there's nothing you can do. Also, in that game, I don't really like what they did to Rasputin. They turned him into a pervert. I mean, he's got one attack that's just crazy disturbing. And it's trying to be funny, but it's, it's, uh... It's just disturbing. So let's talk a little bit more about Genghis Khan and forget about World Heroes Anthology, which I don't like. Genghis Khan is a very aggressive character. I've played as him a couple of times. Much more than most of the other characters, aside from Rasputin, Jane, and Mudman. But uh, Genghis Khan is pretty good. Um, he's aggressive, you know, he's got some, some handy moves. He's good for just all out assaulting your opponent. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Rasputin's from Mars. So now we're going to Italy. Who are we fighting? Oh, final boss time! We didn't have to fight Jan. Thank goodness. Now, what is it with, with fighting games and having a final boss who's some naked silver guy? Some naked, muscular, bald, silver guy. Or just a big, naked guy in general. Also, seems like every fighting game, or just about every fighting game, has that one character who can turn into all the other characters or fight like all the other characters. I mean, why does every... why does it seem like every fighting game has that? Also, I'm pretty sure this, this Joker doesn't take much damage, so we may have a hard time here, for once. What's he gonna do his explode attack? I, I probably shouldn't jinx it. Yeah! I think the thing with him is after you land a hit on him while he's turned into one of your, uh, one of your co-fighters or whatever you want to call him. Oh. I may end up losing this. I might have to switch back to Jan. Oh, got him. Now he's going to change back like he always does. And he went 
back to Genghis Khan. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of focusing right now. I think I got him. No. That was a draw. We're evenly matched. But yeah, I mean, it seems like every fighting game has a final boss and some big, naked, muscular guy. And every fighting game has a character who can... Oh, there's his explode move. And he grins afterwards. It's awesome. Yeah, I'll admit, this, uh, this final boss has some personality, but not much. Also, that was a bad touch. Here comes Helena. Oh, goodness. Oh, well, I got him that time. Yeah, there's not much to say here other than this guy's kind of a... kind of jerk, but not really. You know, I fought worse final bosses. Eno from Guilty Gear, anyone? How about Gil from Street Fighter 3 Third Strike? That guy, oh man. And of course, pretty much every King of Fighters game has a BS final boss. And there's, uh, there's Jim Pachi from Tekken 5. Oh gosh, I don't even want to think about that game. <laughs> I, I don't really like Tekken 5. I like... I like, uh... Some of the other Tekken games, like 3 and Tag Tournament. This is gonna be disappointing if I, if I lose this round. Actually, it was a draw, so... Oh, there's Muscle Power! We didn't get to see him, and I didn't talk about him much, mostly because I keep forgetting he exists. You know, he's he's the other Potemkin character. Um, he's the slow, grabby type, except I think he's even more slow than, uh, than Johnny Maximum. Maybe I should start using more moves. Like this one. Yeah, that actually worked. Oh, got him. Keep jumping back and doing this. Oh. Oh. Counter throw. So we finally beat the Neo Gigas or whatever he is, and he explodes and grins at us. It's just too creepy. Oh, but that's not the end. We get another generic final boss. <laughs> it's. Uh, okay, wait for it. Yet another silver guy. This guy is also naked and muscular, and I haven't seen him do that before. Ever. Not joking. That's weird. This guy may be easier than that other one that we were just fighting. Because, as you can see, he's a little more aggressive, but he loses health more quickly. So, we can just do that to him. There we go. And he's like jumping around and screaming and all that. But yeah, this game has not one, but two final bosses who are naked silver guys. And this guy's just falling for every trick I have, isn't he? Pretty much just walk right up to him and grab him. Well, maybe that's on an easier difficulty. No, I'm pretty sure on difficulty 4 you can just walk right up and grab him like this. <laughs> there was one time where I did nothing but grabs on one of these final bosses. It was embarrassing. Oh, I probably should have tried to counter that one. Oh. He may win this round. Maybe. Nope, I shoved him with my giant magical hands. So yes, I just won the game on the normal difficulty. Congratulations. My wretched block, I have come to deliver you from your basic instincts. And from your killer instincts. Seriously, come play this game instead. Rasputin opens the home of love and humanity. And burgers! Did, did that get anyone? Chew glass, pal! Go play in traffic! Alas, the world seems unprepared for his teachings. Was that... Was that the narrator? So that's the ending you get. It's not quite as cinematic as other fighting game endings, but there you go. But yeah, that's World Heroes 2. Wow. <laughs> what a game. You know, it's, it's a fighting game. It's on the Super Nintendo. 
We're all being honest here. I uh, I like this game more than Street Fighter, but I I really don't like the Street Fighter series if I'm honest. Um, but I don't quite like this ga game as much as a lot of others I've played, like King of Fighters and Guilty Gear especially. Um, Guilty Gear is my my favorite fighting game of all time, uh, specifically X2 and Accent 4. But yeah, this game this game is all right. It's pretty good. It's a good little fighting game to play on your Super Nintendo. Um, so I suggest you try it out sometime. Last time I checked, you know, you could buy a cartridge of it for <laughs> only five dollars, so that's pretty good. Well, it looks like ah, it's the best hero. Um, or you could download the Japanese version and see the skeleton with his head coming off. Either way, <laughs> you know. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about this game, is that it is indeed a fighting game with interesting characters. So, with that, this is Justinian, and I'm gonna, gonna go play another game. <laughs>